Today, two issues. One, the Patriots, a lingering problem there, although they firmly believe they don't have an outbreak. They've added another player to the COVID-19 reserve list. It's James Ferentz, offensive lineman. And the standards have changed for how you get on it now, too. It's not just a positive test. They're not going to screw around with anyone who was in sufficiently close contact with someone who is positive because they don't want to take the chance of getting the virus in the building if the person later does test positive. And it's smart because there is that lag between when you collect the sample, when you get the result, and the person could be shedding virus in between. So it seems like the bar has gone up or down, whichever way results in more placement on COVID-19 reserve. But everything's still on, Shireen, for the Patriots to host the Broncos on Sunday, a week later than it was supposed to happen. Yeah, you know, I was on the conference call with Dr. Alan Seals, the NFL's chief medical officer, twice this week, including yesterday, and they're just getting way more strict in, in you know, with cold and flu season coming up. They don't know if the symptoms that players report are actually cold and flu symptoms or are they COVID symptoms? A lot of them are the same between the two, so they don't know. So they're going to send people home uh, in lieu of anything else. And then, of course, if you get a, a positive is it a false positive or is it really a positive? So they, I think they've learned a lot through the Patriots situation and particularly through the Tennessee Titans situation of what they need to do and don't do. And you look at a player like Matt Pryor of the Eagles who went on the COVID-19 reserve list uh, today and won't play on Sunday. Well, he didn't actually test positive for COVID. What happened was he came in and reported someone that he was around did test positive outside the organization. And so out of an abundance of caution, they've placed him on the COVID list. So I think we're going to see a lot more of these, Mike, uh, as we move forward, just because we are getting into cold and flu season and the, and the symptoms are the same. A couple of things. I put a lot of faith in the honor system here because when players yeah. realize they're getting shut down for a game or a practice or whatever because they were too candid about who they were in contact with, they may just decide, you know what, let's just let it ride. Let's see if I test positive. If I, if I test positive, then it's an issue. And there's plenty of guys that think it's no big deal. There's plenty of people who think it's not even a real thing in our society. So it wouldn't surprise me if some guys decide to zip it when it comes to whether or not there's someone in their household that tested positive because they don't want to be deprived of the ability to play. Players want to get on the field because they know if it's next man up, they may be out. My other point is this. I wonder, and I'm going to choose my words carefully here to an extent, I wonder how much of the changes we've seen are the result of things the NFL has learned that it couldn't have known or the NFL catching up to what it should have been doing all along. And I say that for one very important reason. I got a ton of respect for Dr. Alan Sills. He's a brain guy, not an epidemiologist. And that's a huge distinction as it relates to the various disciplines in the field of medicine. You know, when I practiced law, I specialized in labor and employment cases. If somebody came to me one day and said, hey, how'd you like to handle a medical malpractice case? I said, how'd you like me to lose a medical mal malpractice case? Because I'm not suited to do it. It's not where I've concentrated my practice. And, and I'd, I'd love to know exactly who the epidemiologists are that the NFL is relying on and why there isn't an epidemiologist running point here. And again, I'm trying not to disrespect Dr. Sills, but I think at some level, he's got to be thinking, how did I draw this short straw? This isn't my area of expertise. No more than we'd want Dr. Anthony Fauci to perform brain surgery. So there really is that question. I mentioned it because a coach raised with me not that long ago. When we look at the struggles the NFL currently is having, the question is, is it bad players or is it a bad playbook? And we really don't know. And there's really no way to know. Yeah, the, there is no way to know, Mike. And I know this. I know Alan Sills is the face for the NFL. He comes out and speaks whenever they have press conferences to talk about COVID-19. Behind the scenes, we don't really know if he's the point guy. Maybe they do have an, a, an expert in that field uh, who is really running things, who Alan Seals is listening to. And I know they have several teams uh, in the background, medical teams. They have one for contact tracing and they have one for actual COVID cases. And and so they go those directions. Once they have a positive test, they try to figure it out if it's a false positive or a real positive and do all the contract contact tracing and everything else they need to do. But he is definitely the face for the NFL when it comes to COVID-19 cases, whether he's really running the show 
behind the scenes, that's what we don't know. And we don't know how many people they have or really what they're doing. And you're right. I think they have learned a lot, but did they start behind the eight ball at the beginning, not being fully prepared? We kept talking in the offseason, oh, they've got plenty of time. They've got plenty of time. And there does seem to be a point in there when they wasted some of that time that they had. And some of these th- these things they're learning on the fly, maybe they should have already known and should have been prepared for from the get-go. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.